Cow. F250. What is it? F250. One more time. F250. That's right, boys and girls. It's an F250. What are we doing to it? You're wondering. This is the Glenham car. This is a big F250, as if there would be a small F250. Well, this guy's in for a full stereo upgrade, except for the radio. And the reason why we're keeping the radio is because it's a Sony radio. Let's take a look. So the plan today and for the foreseeable future is to go with the Maestro AR as well as the new Kenwood XR606 DSP. We got a cool T harness, the AF02. This is the amplifier here. We've done this one before. We shot a whole big video on it. Today we're shooting a whole nother one going in a big Ford. So a couple other things going in the car other than just an amp is some Focal Universal Coaxial 6 naps for the rear as well as the Focal Universal Component 6x9s for the doors and the tweeter and the A-pillar. We'll talk about those more later as Fernando gets to them. So for those of you that aren't familiar with this particular system, the AR, it's this little cool maestro box like this. And what it allows you to do is take out that Sony amplifier and replace it with an aftermarket amplifier. You see these RCAs right here. These are actually outputs. There's no RCA inputs on this. There's just this cool little plug here. And what that's designed to do is plug into through all these cables into the car. Now this particular amplifier works off a smartphone app and it has EQs, crossovers, time corrections, parametric EQ, tons of stuff. It's awesome, which we'll all get to as we finish up the install. We'll show you all that. The nice thing about this is this allows you to take that Sony system and you don't have to use high level to low level adapters. You don't have to use summing modules. You don't have to do any of that garbage. It integrates with your factory radio 100%. So if you have backup sensors, lane departure warnings, navigation, Bluetooth, you name it, if there's a sound coming out of that factory radio, it's gonna come out of this amplifier the exact same way it does now. The only difference is it's gonna be with this cool Kenwood and not the crappy factory one. This is really neat stuff. What we wanna do first is we need to take this over. It's got this USB on it. We have to plug it in the computer. We have to flash it to the serial number of this amplifier so the two talk to each other. That is one of the things about the iDataLink system that is universal. It doesn't matter if you're doing like an RR to replace the radio or you're doing an AR to replace the amplifier. You have to pair it with the product you're attaching it to and you have to do it on a Windows machine. We're gonna go next door to the, to the store and flash this module. So let's, let's head over there real quick. Sorry, I couldn't talk in there. There's a bunch of people around. Check out the other video if you guys need to step-by-step -step walk through. It's in a Dodge Ram, same setting. Back in the bay. Now, make sure you print off the instruction manual like we did at the end there. Instructions are helpful. So let's go ahead and take a look at all these parts that we have. So obviously we have the amplifier and we have our module flash right now. We can remove the USB from that, set that aside. Instructions, we don't need that box anymore. Let's open up the FO2. So one of the first plugs in the box is this gray one here. This is the speaker harness right here. This is gonna go to all the speakers in the car and attach to the speaker outputs of the amplifier. So this is just gonna go right here. This guy here, this is going to plug into the rest of the Sony amplifier. And then this is going to plug into your Maestro module here because the module needs to be mounted back by the amplifier. We have the OBD2 connection as well as this guy here, which I'm sure will explain to us in the instructions once we get inside of those. And then we have these. These are to lengthen the cable. So depending on where the amplifier is mounted, if we can't put this amplifier in that spot, then we can lengthen it and move it someplace else. And then last but not least is this little guy here. This little plug comes with the Maestro. This is the cable that talks to the amplifier. Make sure you don't lose that. This one is the important one. That goes right over here into this. It's gonna plug in just like that. So what we want to do now is that we have all this stuff set up. We actually want to go over to the car and remove everything behind the back seat. We have a box that needs to go in there. We have a factory sub we need to get out, a jack we need to get out, a back carpet we need to get out. Let's go into the back of the car right now and start taking that thing apart. This has the fold down seats just like the F-150 now. So what you have to do is reach up behind here and there's a little tab you pull and then the seat will come down. Just like that. This one right here, just pull that and this whole thing will come down. As you can see behind here, we have the Sony amp, we have factory subwoofer, over there is the jack, and then this piece of carpet here. So we're just gonna remove all of this right now. All right, first what you're gonna do is start prying carefully three clips, and it's gonna be a seven millimeter behind that clip. 
like say carefully try to pry this handle Okay, under this handle, it's a panel right here, and that's two screws also. Grab your angle, pull it carefully from one side to the other side. You don't want to scratch, but you don't want to break the car, so... The good thing about these uh, new cars is like they have the bolts of the same size. It's kind of cool. So we put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two is in the bottom. Grab your pry tool and start. Perfect. From this side, you're actually pulling four connections and the open and close. This one has like a little clip in the bottom side. So you just push it down, that one comes up. As soon as you pull your door out, I like to take the window switches, door lock, and the position of the seat, take it out from the panel, and plug it back in into the door. You have to roll the windows up, so we don't want any light or any trouble, just to make sure. I made two holes on the bracket to tie the wire so the wire is not loose when the window is up and down. Let's go to the car and mount the speaker.
So we went ahead and deadened all the area down here that didn't have factory deadening on it. Like this silver stuff is factory. And then there's some fuzzy sound deadening right here. Weird stuff. It's like carpet, but it's got butyl on the back. Made sure we did all this because we had to take that carpet out and it's not going back in. So we wanted to make sure it was deadened. And then of course we covered all the holes in the floor where the bolts were so water doesn't splash up into there. Now, the reason why we had to take it all out because we have this box here. He went ahead and ordered this and brought it with him. So 112. We're gonna go ahead and put a kicker comp RT in here shallow mount and then the amplifier and everything is going to mount right here now what we need to do is go ahead and start getting that laid out and get the subwoofer and get this box put together So we went with a dual two comp RT and the jumper you saw me connect is so that this is a four ohm load because that amplifier for channels five and six needs to see a four ohm load to get maximum 200 watts of power output to this guy here. So let's spin this around and start working on the amplifier. So what we want to do first is just kind of plug everything in and figure out what we need, what we don't need, what goes where. We have the wiring diagram. Now what we want to do is check and see, like we plugged in the OBD2, and we don't need that. We can set this aside. According to this, we do obviously need the data connection, so that's good there. Blue here is not used. This guy here, there's nothing on here indicating that we need that, so we can set that aside. All right, so we got gray, gray, white, white, purple, purple, green, green, red, red. Let's check these. All right, so these are all set. Second. Turn on, not connected. All right, so we don't need this guy here. According to this, right here, and turn on, no connection. So we'll go ahead and just cap this off. Now, these are for the factory subwoofer, and we are not retaining the factory subwoofer. We know what this is, it goes out to the speakers. We don't need that quite yet. Now that we know what we need and where it's gonna go, for the most part, this is gonna sit like this. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this factory tape and retape this harness so it doesn't look like this. And the Fords, it's really cool because the tweeter's on its own channel, the mid bass is on its own channel. So if you wanna go active or if you want to go with a passive external crossover, there's a lot of uses for that. For us, the mid range and the tweeter are gonna be on the same channels, one and two. But what we need to do is just go ahead and connect both gray pairs and both white pairs together and get them into their corresponding channels, one and two. Now white, just like when you're hooking up a radio, is going to be driver's front. Gray is going to be passenger front.
wiring is done. These three plugs here are gonna plug into the factory Sony amps plugs. This is our power and ground. We're gonna run those, hook them up. What we want to do though is go ahead and pull this off and unplug it. This doesn't get plugged in until the very end. You can just set it aside so you don't lose it, along with the instructions. up like this mm -hmm. and then we got to kind of grab this stuff and just kind of yeah, okay that's it I'll get it from there thank you sir The box is in, the power window motor is mounted. I don't know what this is. This is like a weight, it's pretty cool. But the motor works, goes up behind the box. The amplifier is all plugged in. All the connections are made behind the panel here. What we did have to do is go ahead and cut some of the harness apart and retape it so that this wire was long enough so that I could make all the connections behind the panel here. So that's something to keep in mind if you want to hide the connections, pick up some Tessa tape so that you can retape this particular one. Now the only thing we have left to do as far as the amplifier is concerned is run the power wire up front connected to the battery. So we have the power wire through the firewall. Uh, if you are running a power wire through this, there is a provision in the factory grommet. There's a nipple that you can cut off to run the power wire through, although I don't think you're getting anything bigger than a four gauge through it. Now when it comes to mounting the fuse holder, <sighs> You could probably drill a hole into this apparatus here. There's a big area here that there's, it's just a plastic mount. The only thing is, is it's all one piece. <sighs> For this, what I've gone ahead and done is made this guy. It's a simple L, and what it's going to do is slide in right here. Our wire will attach to it like this, and then, of course, we can attach to the battery. The problem with attaching to this battery, if you notice, this is silver and this is black. These are anodized, which means they're not going to be as conductive as actually attaching to the battery itself. Now, the negative terminal has this cool stem right here that you can actually attach something to. The positive doesn't. What the heck? So what we went ahead and done is they're actually the same terminals, meaning there's a flat area provision here where it could have gone. So we went ahead and took the terminal off. We drilled a hole. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just put a bolt up through it like this and attach our power wire to it. The last thing we want to do is put some strip caulk around the grommet to make sure that it's waterproof. All right, so there we go. Looks very factory-esque. You have 
this guy here and we went ahead and added our own we also sanded the top of this to expose the copper underneath so it's a nice tight bite into the copper fuse holders mounted goes up into the firewall all is good so the time has come to go ahead and plug in the idata link module so all we have to do is plug everything in here instructions don't mention anything special just stick it on here like that on the instructions, I can't stress this enough. Every time you guys do a car, is always read the instructions. And for this one, there are special notes. And step four right here is connect all harnesses to Maestro AR, which is what we just did. Down here, you have note three. The aftermarket amplifier will not turn off with the key. It will shut down when the vehicle goes to sleep. That's important because if you're turning on off the key and you don't notice the amplifier turning off, well, it's in the notes, but you might be freaking out why it's doing that. Secondly, there will no longer be any audible beeps from the OEM radio when using the radio's menus. This is also something that is, you know, if you didn't read this, you wouldn't know about. So you might be like, how come I don't hear any beats? Maybe calling these guys up or thinking you might've done something wrong in the install. Always just, just glance over these, read these. These are important. They also might be something, if, if you're a retailer like us, the customer might have a problem with because they might, oh, I really like those beeps. Where did they go? Definitely, you know, always glance over the notes. So this is in. Fernando's still working on the speakers. We have the rear two to do, but while he's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and start getting this set up because there's a lot of setup that doesn't involve actually listening to it. We're gonna go ahead and start on that portion of it real quick. So we need to get a smartphone. We need to turn this thing on. We need to pair the Bluetooth. So when you're going to set up the amp on the side of the amp over here by where the model number is, there's a little switch that says A and B. A is what they call pro mode. B is what they call user mode. So when you're setting this thing up for the first time, default is A, which is pro mode. And that's where all the actual settings and stuff like that are. B is more like user mode. So once you've got it all set up, it'll allow you to do like subwoofer volume control as well as use preset EQ settings. So there's a couple different ways you can use this depending on the customer. And we're gonna do our best to kind of walk you through them, but you know, even Kenwood does the crappiest instruction manual for this. Download the app to your phone. You can go to get it from app or Google Play, it doesn't matter. Click the Bluetooth button in the bottom. Model number for the amp is gonna come up. Go ahead and tap it. It's gonna say connect it okay. The first thing it's gonna ask you to do is speaker connection. So we're gonna come up here and we're gonna go to new, setting name, enter name. So we're gonna call this the white F250. We'll click save. So now we have that. And so if you're the installer, like if you saw one was the RAM, that was the video we did on the RAM where we installed it. Two is gonna be this one. The nice thing about that as the installer, I can always pair back in if they manage to get in and screw things up and just set it back to what we, we originally did. So go ahead and click on that. First thing he's gonna do is bring up to this page here. This is how you set up the speakers. We want it stereo. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click front, done. And we'll tap, we'll call it left, left, right. And we're gonna click and we're we're gonna call them full range. You have to fill all these out. When you're tapping on them, you have the option, for example, one and two, left and right, front. We could have made it a tweeter, a mid, a mid high, a mid bass, or a woofer. So you have total options on what you wanna do. In this case, we're picking full range. Click done, select back. And then you'll see it listed up here in the top what it is. Come back here, do the same thing. We're gonna call this, so we have none. Non-fading, so you can have a non-fading output out of this. There's there's a lot, like I said, there's a million ways you could do this. For this, it's just good old fashioned rear. So it's like done, go to our next. Left automatically gives you a right. Come down here. There again, you have the same options. We'll click full range, select done. Now, don't be confused because it's full range. There's crossovers we're gonna set up later. So it's like back and there again it'll be the data will be there five and six five and six we're gonna go ahead and make non-fading because it's a subwoofer channel and non-fading if i didn't explain that means when you fade from front to rear the output of that channel doesn't change and then we'll go down and we're gonna call it a woofer select done so we have left plus right meaning that's gonna make it a mono channel woofer it's giving us a cool little woofer logo here if you hadn't noticed these woofer these icons change a little bit we'll select back there we go that's what it's gonna look like when you have it set up that way so over here you see this this little whatever this is that says s dot 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 e we're gonna go ahead and click that this is are you sure you want to send the setting data to the amplifier we'll say yes and then it'll come up and say okay so now what we've done is we've configured the amplifier we can select okay so now the basics of the amplifier are set up we can come back in here and go back now we can go to sound settings and then we're gonna go to two here we're gonna click new we're gonna name it again we'll select save the reason why there, there are two different settings this is important so a lot of shops like 
like to do what they call the house target curve. That is that they have a preset EQ that the installer or the salesman or the owner or whatever, somebody in the store loves. It's like, I like this sound. So they have a target EQ point that they'll put every car to that they feel is right on the money, which usually it is. You can save that setting and just apply it to this. So for example, for one, this is the RAM setting. If we just wanted to set this amp to the RAM setting, we could. The only problem is, is like the time correction would be off and all that fun stuff. We could always go back and fix that if we just like the regular EQ portion of it. If we were happy with the way it sounded like in that car, we could just apply that EQ setting we made for the RAM to this car and be done with it, walk away and everything would be great. So we'll go ahead and we're gonna click on that. So here we go, here is the app and all the fun stuff we can set up. Digital time alignment, digital crossover, graphic EQ, parametric EQ. Now, digital time alignment, just tap the speaker that you want, select next. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to select the feet, the inches. You can come over here and you can gain down if you need to, even though after you put in the time correction, if for some reason like that speaker's still a little bit too loud, but otherwise, just to set it up, pick a speaker and enter in the setting. The other thing too to keep in mind, when you're measuring the, the speakers in the door, the speakers don't come flush with the door panel. They actually sit in a good inch, inch and a half. So make sure you add that to the measurement. Don't just measure it to the door panel. Always take in consideration moving in to the actual speaker because that's what you're going for. You're not going to a surface, you're going to the speaker. We're gonna go ahead and measure that. Literally, tape measure and we're gonna write it down. So we went ahead and wrote down our numbers and there again on the front, they're the same distance. That's pretty cool. So now we'll go ahead, tap the speaker. It'll highlight it blue, hit next. We'll go ahead and type in our feet. We'll click, so it's typed in three feet, eight inches, because it's 44 inches. So we'll click back, come over to the next one. Now, if you notice, when you highlight it, it'll, they're still both highlighted. You have to shut this one off. So we'll tap it until it goes dead, and then select next. So you can actually set them both to the same delay. Next on the list is the digital crossover. Now this has no dials on the amp or anything like that, so you have to set up the crossover, and of course the radio doesn't have one. So now we can tap it, and now if you notice when we tap it, they both come on. So we'll select next. First question on the list is type of crossover. So we have type of crossover. Go ahead and select what you like. High pass, band pass. So if you're doing it as mid range, we're gonna do high pass. Next thing we want to do is select our frequency. Now up here you'll see the crossover representation here. So I'll come over here. And as we move it, you'll notice this is moving over. We're gonna go ahead and start at 78 as a crossover point. Then you can lower it if you need to, the, the gain. If you hit the turn arrow button, you can see this. Now, if you notice, there again, you gotta turn these off. But if you want all four speakers to be crossed over at the same point, you could do that. So if you're doing matching, let's say six and a half, you could just do them all at once. Go to our subwoofer, and it's already got a low pass setting in there as default. We're gonna go ahead and bump it up to 87. And the reason why I did that is because it already knew when we set it as a subwoofer, the speaker set up, turn on the crossover. All right, so we have the time correction. We have the digital crossover set up, and now we can go on to the graphic equalizer. And there again, you can set all four at the same time, or you can turn off and do just the fronts, do just the rears, you can do the subwoofer. You can EQ everything at the same time if you like. Go ahead and select next, and this is what the EQ looks like. You can turn it like this, and you can actually just raise and lower if you like. If you just press and hold one of the memories on the bottom and then hit reset, it'll go ahead and make it flat again while you're playing with it. And we'll just go through the parametric EQ as well. Parametric EQ allows you to EQ each speaker individually. So if you've got one speaker that is giving you issue or you want to work on, you can come over to just that and select next. And then you have your three bands of equalization that you can apply to it. For right now, we'll go ahead and set send to amplifier. We'll select okay. So that's about as far as we're gonna get on this until for now. Fernando is done with the rear speakers. Then we'll get back into the car and actually listen to it, see what's going on. The other thing we need to do too is a polarity test. So once he gets done with that, we're gonna go ahead and put our disc in, pop all the speakers, make sure that everything's going in the right direction.
So for the rear speakers, we're using the Metra 825605. So we put some foam in the back, foam in the front, and then we actually can put the speaker. Alright, so the polarity is all test good, on to the rest of it. Alright, so what the plan is now is to go ahead and play some pink noise, a separate iPhone to do that, and then we're going to go ahead and use this iPhone, tune the amplifier, and use this iPad hooked up to our audio control iTest mic to run an RTA onto the screen here so that we can get an idea of what's going on in the car. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that the radio is zeroed out, and in this case we're going to fade it all the way just to the fronts. I just want to hear the fronts, not, not the rears. So right now we have the EQ setting on here we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this guy and what I'm doing is I'm just actually playing with it right now because it's always nice to have fun so I've dragged these frequencies up here which is in turn drag them up up here just to see what kind of results I'm getting how how sensitive this thing is gonna be how loud these are. Now keep in mind, this just doesn't have to be flat. You just want a nice smooth, you don't want any, you don't want it to look like the Grand Canyon. Make sure you play with it a little bit just to just to have some fun. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect the first time. I mean, it will be when it leaves, but while well, we're playing with it. Okay, so the other thing to do is keep in mind that listening to this type of music for extended period of time really screws with your ears. Play with it for a little bit, playing some pink noise. They're gonna don't play it crazy loud because you're gonna hear ringing if you do. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to some music. I have a generic EQ setting that looks good on the RTA. That doesn't mean it's gonna sound good here. So we're gonna go over back to our music and just play our favorite song. Kind of get an idea of what it sounds like. And then we can go back in and do a little more EQing. You guys ever had that feeling when you're listening to in a system it's one of your like all-time favorite songs and you get goosebumps that's that's the best feeling man Ooh. all right i'm extremely excited about the way this thing sounds right now it's sounding good now the only complaint i have about this app is that in order to do subwoofer volume control, you have to exit out of pro mode and go back into user mode, which means you have to flick the AV switch on the amplifier. But seriously, dudes, why would you do that? I mean, like, I want to turn up the subwoofer volume. I'm tuning the car, and now I have to flick the switch on the amp, change the app mode, turn the subwoofer volume up, exit out of that app, flick the switch again. What the heck were you guys thinking? Other than that, it's a really cool app, but that is the one thing that drives me nuts. So go ahead and close the app on your phone, relaunch it, and it's gonna change the way it looks. You can see right here on the bottom, it's subwoofer volume control. So go ahead and we'll turn this up. I'm gonna exit back out and go into the pro mode so I can play with it some more and adjust the subwoofer EQ. So we're, we're done with the front. We got the sub tuned in. The only thing we have left to do is, is add in the rears. We don't need much from them. Let me tell you what, it, it's just a matter of just, just bringing them up with enough volume to fill the cab full of sound. You know, it's a hit or miss when you're doing the rear fill. Some guys are just straight up three-way, you know, tweeter, mid, sub, and they're happy. Other guys, those rear speakers mean a whole heck of a lot to them. We just kind of like to bring them in about midway so you can tell they're there, but they're not screwing up the front so much. And then if people want it louder, you know, we can always go back in and adjust it. You and me. Okay, so a couple things that the AR is doing. Okay, just 
because anytime you interface with one of these, it's gonna be some quirks. One, like when you hit the buttons, the ding, ding, ding is gone. Okay. Uh, two, when you open that door, it's yep. gonna mute the front sound. Okay. Because I think it's trying to do the ding, 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 but it's not there anymore. It's one of the notes that they put on the sheet that we're like, oh, I didn't know I have a ding. All right, so. No ding. There are dings. Some of the dings are quieter than other, like the seatbelt thing is still there. There are some weird things like that that it's gonna do. All right. Oh yeah. Feel it. Wow, it sounds so weird. We have these two phones. Radio sounds. <laughs> oh yeah, I hope so. We had to use two phones because we needed this one to control it and this one to play sound. So Kenwood has an app to download. Yep. The... yep. It's uh, the Kenwood DSP app. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through that. And all right, so we have so much to say. Crash into me, maybe. Right. You're gonna be on YouTube? Yes. Yes! Alright guys, this F-250, as we like to say, is done. Hope you guys enjoyed this with that new Kenwood DSP amplifier and the iData Link AR. It's definitely a cool Cool way to do it. If you have one of these Sony systems and you're into Kenwood, you're gonna wanna check this out for sure. All right guys, that brings this one to an end. Fernando, say bye. Bye. You guys have a great night as always. On to the next one. See you later, bye.